In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Python interpreter both interactively and by writing a script or a program. First thing we need to do is open a command prompt window. I already have one open. I'll give you a second to do that if you don't already have one open. Then you can either navigate to the Python directory or you can use it wherever you are if Python, the Python interpreter command, is in your path. Usually when Python is installed, it's added to your path. I like to work in the directory just because I like to save files there. So I'm going to navigate to the Python directory. I'm going to use Python 3.0 for this example, but Python 2.7 will work just as well. So to start the interactive interpreter, all you have to do is type in the command Python. And Python takes you right into the interactive shell. The shell lets you type Python expressions of all different types. So for example, I can type a number, and that number evaluates to itself, typical literal expression. I can type an arithmetic expression or a numeric expression, and Python will interpret that correctly. We can also print strings. So I'll print hello world. Notice how I do that. The print command requires its argument to be in parentheses. And because I'm printing a string, I put that in quote marks, and you can use double or single quotes. Let me show you what I mean. So that works, and single quotes work just as well. We can also do fancier things in the interactive shell. For example, I can assign a range to a variable. Then I can write a loop. Notice that you have to indent. And then if that's all I want in my loop, I hit enter once and then leave a blank space. And then notice on the second enter, it lists my numbers 1 through 10, which is the range I defined in this range statement right here. Let's do a little fancier example of the same thing. Declare variable sum equal to 0. There's a mistake. I'll leave it in because it's in instructive to see where the mistakes come in. What I forgot to do was I'm trying to write a for in loop or a for each loop, and I forgot to put my variable. So for i in numbers, we'll clear that mistake. Be sure to indent. This time we're going to add each number in the range to sum. Then to determine what the sum is, I'll just print it out. And the sum is 55 because 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 dot 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 10 is equal to 55. That's probably enough demonstration of the interactive shell. We'll be seeing it again. So to exit out of the shell, I type exit with open and close parentheses. And that takes me back to the command prompt. Let's clear the screen. Now let me demonstrate how to use the interpreter with a script or a program. So we're going to write a program to sum the numbers 1 through 10 in the loop, just like we did. So we're going to call that program or script loop.py. I should mention that I'll use the terms script and program interchangeably. And a script is a program, and a program is a script. So either one works fine. Notice that Python programs or scripts have to have a .py extension. That's how the interpreter recognizes that it's a Python program. So there's the program. Let's erase it so we can build it again. Let me put that notepad screen in full view here. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to essentially rewrite that program. So sum equals 0, numbers equals range 1 to 11 for i in numbers. And notice that we use a colon to indicate the beginning of the loop body. We'll be discussing that more in the course. Then we're going to say sum plus equal i to add each value of numbers to the sum. And notice that to indicate the body of the loop that we indent. So here I indent in three spaces. You can pick the indention that you choose. Then once we're done, we type print sum. And that will display our sum. So we click file, exit, and save to save the script. We can type loop.py and the Python interpreter is automatically loaded, or 
If for some reason Python is not in your path, you can type Python loop py as long as you're in a Python directory and get the same result. So that's our overview of using the Python interpreter. We'll be using it more in these review lessons and you'll get a better feel for how it works. But I do encourage you, if you don't have a lot of Python experience or experience with interactive shells, to play around with the shell quite a bit to get comfortable with it. Even though I'll be writing programs or scripts primarily in this course, there are a couple of occasions where I use the interactive shell and it'll help you follow the lessons better if you already have some experience using the shell. But with that, we're ready to move on to the next lesson where I'm going to discuss how Python works with variables and data.